Hi again. This uh, is part two of the uh, the making, the fabricating of some extension arms for this Harbour Freight scissor lift. This is the original arm, and you can see we've got about another five inches um, on top of that. And this is so we can reach the the pinch welds on the vehicles. So at least said about this welding effort, the better. But again, I don't think it's super critical um, in terms of how structurally sound it needs to be, as long as it doesn't deflect too much and break the weld. As you can see, the uh, where the original sits, most of the weight is borne here with very little leverage. With this, once this is out, you can see the, the balance point there's more beyond the body of the lift than there is over the top of the lift. So we'll, we're going to have a lot more force on this pin here. And then also we're going to thread this end too to screw in. Obviously not on that piece, but on this piece and thread in here. And thus create the arm with the pivot. And we'll have much more reach with this guy. So on the original, the bolt is placed around one inch in from the end. Um, that's a little close to me, does that? I'm going to give it an inch and a half. It means I lose half an inch on the overall distance, but. Uh, just feels a little close to the edge for me. Originally I was going to use 20 mil bar um, for this and I noticed I had some uh, I had a, a whole bunch of three quarter round bar stock so um, works out about 19 millimeters so we lose a millimeter off there um, not too worried about that Got the tap. I'm going to do the uh, the internal threading. Um, oh, the, sorry, the external threading on the lathe. But for the hole here, we're going to go for an 11 sixteenths. Um, I'm going to go for a pilot hole, probably just under a quarter of an inch to start, and then go up to the 11 sixteenths. Ideally, for a, a three quarter inch. Um, I think it's uh, 21, 30 seconds. Okay, so we've got the bar all squared and centered on the drill press, ready to go. And uh, we'll take the first pass. Probably not a bad speed, a bit of lube on there. And off we go. Nice firm, consistent pressure. steel had to release this to use the, uh, the winder on the back to raise things up and now we're going to clamp the whole thing in place <laughs> Now we just need to thread that 
thread the bar and we have our first extension. So I'm pretty sure there's some ancient Chinese proverb um, that states you can never have enough tools and uh, or if there isn't there should be and I have two tap wrenches both of which are insufficient to hold this tap so I could either spend a couple of hours making something that will hold the tap or I can uh, wing it with these two adjustable spanners. So we'll give this a go first. When this doesn't work, or we screw something up, we'll start over. So, um, yeah. You can never have enough tools. But the biggest problem is keeping this square as we go back and forth. Ideally, that's why you have two handles, you can balance it out like this. And it looks like we're through. Just make sure we get the full thickness of the thread all the way there we go we have a winner and sure enough there we go you have it all the way through and just for good measure we uh, we flipped the bar over and we went back in all the way through with the tap from the other side to make sure we get the maximum thread on this hole So as you can see, the bar that we just threaded on the lathe fits pretty well into this tapped hole that we, uh, we drilled and tapped earlier. However, it did take me probably 30, 40 minutes on the lathe to turn this thread. And uh, I'm thinking uh, as much fun as that is, I may have to get a die to cut the others. Remembering I need to cut thread on both end of these to put the uh, put a locking nut on this end for where it goes through the frame 
So that's going to take me a long time on the uh, on the lathe. So I think I will invest in uh, in a bigger tap and die set than I have, and uh, hopefully speed this job up a little.